right, good morning. I'm Rick Miller with Inman Farm Heritage Days. We're here with two of our hardest working, most loyal volunteers, Tommy Hicks and Glenn Roberts is on the camera over here. Today we're here to talk about our ditch witch, and I'm going to tell a little bit what I know about it, and Tommy's going to tell about what he did to get it going. Um, we've, from what we've learned from our neighbors and friends, this was originally purchased by Georgia Power Company in the mid-1970s. At some point, my late cousin Bill Hart purchased it. He lived next door to us down here, and uh, he was an electrician and used it in his electrical business. And people may remember him from my early show because our church had a concession stand, and their number one prize item they offered was collards that he cooked. And he did that for several years, and then things changed, and the church not doing it anymore. And people still today talk about those collards back in the day. At some point, Bill sold it to Buck Morris, another one of our, our most loyal exhibitors. And he was with us just about every year until he passed away a few years ago. And after he died, his family donated it to the show here. And Tommy and I went over there one Sunday morning, and it was about all four tires are flat, sitting about four inches in the ground. Had to take a shovel and dig the blade out. And we winched it up on his trailer, and uh, Tommy took it to his house. Tommy, what all did you have to do to get it back going? <clears throat> well, the general stuff, I had to rebuild the carburetor and the fuel pump and redo the electrical system, put an alternator on it. Just all the change, you know, gr you know general greasing and surfacing and all, uh, a tune-up on the engine. But um, it amazingly runs very well now, and it, it, it really digs a ditch. And it's a two-cylinder Wisconsin it's air It's a twin-cylinder, 18-horsepower Wisconsin engine. And we plan to use it for our, you know future projects here, but we're also, um, if everything works right, somebody will be driving it in our parade come September. And as always, thanks y'all for watching our videos. And if you like them on uh, YouTube, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and also follow us on social media. Thanks. One of my favorite parts of this restoration is Tommy's fixing the gas tank for us. When we first went and looked at this machine, we opened up the gas tank and it was that stinky, nasty smell of gas that had been in there for several years and just a bunch of goo in the bottom. So we took some of the bolts out, we assumed held the gas tank into the cavity. It's actually up under the seat here in a nice little cavity, sort of made to fit the machine. Well, we took all the bolts out, what we thought were all the bolts, and we couldn't get that thing to budge at all. We beat on it with hammers and pry bars and just kind of gave up on it. And I was pretty satisfied just to tie a lawnmower tank on the back seat and run it off of there, but Tommy wasn't having that. So he, when he took it home, he just he kept on. There were no more bolts in there, but he, he beat and pried until he finally got the tank out. And it was so bad at the bottom, he ended up cutting the bottom of the tank off, cleaning it out good and welded another bottom and it put it back in and you'd never know it's been changed. And, it just makes it a whole lot nicer machine not to have a rigged up gas tank hanging on the back seat. Mm -hmm. 